It's easy to hear your favorite artist on WFPK from wherever you are. Listen on your smart speaker, live stream from our website at WFPK.org from Louisville Public Media. Consequence Podcast Network. Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series that's presented by WFPK at WFPK.org, Consequence, and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here, checking out the episode. Uh, please do hit that subscribe button while you're hanging around. Uh, you do that, I'll give you three brand new interviews every single week. It's a new one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover some new ones at all the usual spots, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, it's Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, WFPK.org, YouTube for the video versions, or anywhere you get your podcasts from. And I'm Kyle Mayer. Today, it's a very special episode uh, as I feature three little sort of mini interviews, one with Jason Isbell, uh, Jim James of My Morning Jacket, and Doug Marsh of Built to Spill. These were all taped in front of a live audience uh, at WFPK for WFPK members only shows. Now, the reason why they're kind of uh, smaller interviews is because, uh, well, most of the reason people showed up was actually to see the artist perform. As I don't have the rights to the music, you won't find those performances here, but you can watch them at WFBK.org. But lucky for me, I get to feature all the talking that we did in the middle. So first, we uh, catch up with uh, my buddy Jason Isbell to talk about uh, putting on his own festival what authenticity means for him, and being featured in Martin Scorsese's upcoming Killers of the Flower Moon. Then we turn our attention to My Morning Jacket's Jim James, somebody I've had on this uh, series uh, a whole lot of times over the years. Uh, He's going to tell us why he loves Halloween more than the other holidays, how public radio has helped the band out throughout their career, and how they go about choosing their releases for their ongoing live album series, Volume 2, uh, just recently released. And then to wrap up, uh, we'll do uh, just talk for a second with Built to Spill's Doug Marsh. He takes us inside their latest album, When the Wind Forgets Your Name, uh, talks about how he worked with the Brazilian duo, as well as his general writing process. So that's all in there. So let's do it. It's Kyle Meredith with Jason Isbell, Jim James of My Morning Jacket, and Doug Marsh of Built to Spill. Jason Isbell here on 91.9 WFPK, a uh, members-only performance from The Monarch here on Bardstown Road. Jason Isbell, welcome back to town. Thank you, Kyle. I'm happy to be here. This is an exciting edition of me visiting your city. Yeah. Oh, it's always exciting. It always is. Some more exciting than others. You know, I was at a show one time uh, watching another person perform, and uh, he stopped about four songs in to yell at his lighting director. That was not my favorite visit to Louisville. <laughs> we don't hang out anymore, not because of that. <laughs> but I'm sure that didn't help. It didn't help. No, I didn't think it was cute. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to have you. Uh, Jason's playing, of course, at Bourbon and Beyond's yes. big old lineup this week. And, uh, but it's really great to have you here, especially during the, uh, the membership week and everything, uh, Pledge Drive. And I, I think you and I have talked about this before, but, uh, you know, I first heard you on public radio. I was really excited uh, when I became a music director here, and I got to play you. Yeah. Like, that was even better. But I was excited about that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I get that excitement from you every single time we yeah. make that ad. It's I'm going to tell you, man, all the, I don't know, can we, uh, uh, can we denigrate other types of radio while <laughs> requesting funds? No, we can't request funds. We can say maybe you would like to <laughs> donate. Perhaps. You can donate if, ads. Let's do it as a conditional. If you have decided on your own, with no influence from any of us on the radio, to <laughs> donate, then please do. Um, but, you know, some of those uh, commercial stations, they, they don't know what to do with people like me. They don't know what kind of music I make, you know, and they got these 10 songs they have to play over and over, or apparently somebody comes and beats them up. Um <laughs> So I am I'm a big fan of public radio because they can play my music for one damn thing, and uh, I can say damn for another thing. You sure can. And <laughs> but that's the only one. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> the other six are no way. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, it, it, I mean, that's what I listen to. You know, I listen I listen to public radio, and uh, and sometimes I hear my own music. Sometimes I hear my wife Amanda Shires her music. Sometimes I hear yes. Um, 
And, you know, they don't know what to do with us on those commercial stations. So I just appreciate you guys for, for finding a home and giving people uh, the word. When we do something, we put a record out, you guys play it. It makes me happy. Yeah. Well, I think community is also a big part of it. And uh, learning that you're starting your own music festival. It's going to happen here at Shoals Fest, right? Yeah. In yeah. a few weeks. Hearing you talk about that, like doing it back in Muscle Shows to put back in the community. Yeah. I mean, what... There, there are, you know, there are a lot of ways to make money, but there are also a lot of ways to sleep well at night. And for me, at a certain point, when I, when I got to the point where I don't really have to worry, are they going to come take my car away? Then I started thinking, maybe I need something other than just more personal, individual success. So I started thinking about the community and about the place where I grew up and about the fact that when I was a kid, you know, I was listening to music and, and learning how to play things on the guitar, and I was following my friends around to watch them play in bars and restaurants. And there were no venues down there and no out-of-town bands, no international bands that were coming through on tour. And so when it became possible for me to start a festival, I thought, well, I could start this somewhere where, you know, people would fly there as a destination and make it a, make it a, a vacation. I could do it in another country. I could do it somewhere where it's less expensive. Or I could do it at home and actually have sort of a, a, a reunion of my family and my friends and also the younger generation of musicians and then celebrate some of the older musicians from my hometown. And that turned out to be a lot more rewarding for me than, than just trying to do a job and get paid, you know. Yeah. Well, it, it certainly ties into what we do here. I mean, it is yeah. about investing back in the community. So, And that's what we're, so we're humans, you know. It, no matter how hard you try, you're going to run into somebody else at some point. <laughs> um, I've gone through long periods where I've avoided it, and sure enough, one day you walk out the front door and there's another human. They're everywhere. And you're reminded of how important it is to keep your community strong and to serve one another in some ways, you know. Yeah. We appreciate that, and uh, and seriously, all you do. I mean, when I talk about your music, the word authenticity comes up so much, mm. and it's not just in the music that you do, but it's you know it's in the lifestyle you lead. So it's that's always appreciated. Well, too. thank you, Kyle. I mean, it's uh, you know, uh, authenticity is always an accident. Uh, so I can't take any credit for really truly being a redneck, um, <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, I, w I find if the songs are good enough, people people believe you're authentic at the very least. And then you can dress however you want. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> you know what? If we're fooled, we're fooled. And I'll, I'll be yeah. happy about that one, yeah. too. Uh, you got the records. Reunions was such a good record a few years ago. I so enjoyed Georgia Blue. I know, um, you know, hopefully there's something on the horizon. But I also wanted to quickly ask, because you're also... A movie star these days. I'm not. Scorsese. I'm not. He's in a Scorsese movie. I coming am. Up. I am. I, I don't think they cut me out. Like, um, <laughs> as of yesterday, I was still in it. And you know, the thing is, it was a long. I was in. I was in Oklahoma shooting this movie for about three months, and I was terrified. Uh, the first day. I got there, I was rehearsing with De Niro and DiCaprio, and I didn't. I, I had all my lines memorized, and I went to say them, and, and it just came out like this because I was, I was so scared the words would not come out of my mouth. And when I finished doing it the first time, this guy behind me patted me on the back. He was like, that was perfect. That sounded so restrained and angry. <laughs> and I was like... I see. I uh -huh. have been uh, fooled into doing a good job by people who are much, much smarter than I am. And so it became obvious. You know, I've never seen a Scorsese movie and thought, this is great except for that one hillbilly. What the hell is he doing? <laughs> so I figured he wouldn't let me be that one hillbilly. Right. You know, he's not going to let me screw up his movie. So, uh, so I just went with it, and I had a really good time, and I learned a whole lot. How's Sturgill's acting in it? Sturgill's a pretty good actor, you know. He's got the accent, too. And I think that's the trick for people like me and Sturgill. Because there was a dialect coach on, on set. And uh, when he met with us, he's just like, oh, you guys just talk like you talk. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but he was with De Niro a lot. Like, uh -huh. <laughs> eh, we got to make you sound like you're from Oklahoma, sir. Yeah. yeah. We get to see that next year? Yeah, I think so. I think sometime around the spring of next year it'll be out. Yeah, it's going to be a good movie. Well, I believe it will. Yeah. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, sir. And we'll be right back right after this. Welcome back. Kyle Meredith, special episode. And next up, Jim James. Jim James here on 91.9 WFPK, live from the Monarch, Bardstown Road. I'm Kyle Meredith. And 
I want to say thanks to uh, the Monarch for having us out. I'm here in front of a, a great group of uh, Louisville Public Media members on this uh, Public Radio Music Day. Uh, so thank you all for coming. And thanks to Jim James here. Man, that sounded really pretty. You're really good. At, has anybody ever told you you're really good <laughs> at writing songs? You're too, you're too sweet. <laughs> My Morning Jackets play in, uh, this Saturday at the KFC Yum Center. Is everybody going? Where are we going? You got your costumes picked out? Jim, do you have your costume picked out? I actually do, yeah. Yeah? It's a surprise? Yeah, oh yeah, it's got to be a surprise. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, that's, that was sure. real half the fun. That's true. Halloween a big time for you? Oh yeah, it's my favorite. Uh, well, I don't really believe in favorites anymore but it's probably my favorite holiday but it's just such a <laughs> such a special time it's such, such a i think it's like maybe one thing we can all agree on sure <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, that makes sense is there one thing in the universe like i think maybe everybody <laughs> thinks halloween is fun i think yeah I'd, there's I'd, probably I'd, some new controversy around halloween though that i don't know about yet <laughs> what's your history i mean because you guys have done the shows like like uh you got to like the favorite costumes or whatever that you've done in the past or yeah, it's funny. You don't, it's trial and error because you don't really know that it would be. You know, it sounds fun to be Ghostbusters or whatever, but then when you're in like the <laughs> hour two of the show, trapped in your Ghostbusters costume with your backpack on and stuff, it's like this was not a good, not a good choice. It's a learning experience. Yeah, you don't really know until you get in there. <laughs> well, it's great. I, I'll be excited to see what you guys are doing and uh, producing a kind generation, opening up yeah, the show. Yeah. Yeah, we just had them in. That's a great band. They're so great. Yeah. yeah, so awesome. Yeah, I'm so excited for them. See what they continue to create. Yeah, and you've been great about that, man. I mean, you've always given you know the the, the nice opening spots to some of the uh, the Louisville acts. I mean, KFC Yum Center. I know you guys helped open that up. I remember Wax Fang opening yeah, up yeah. that one. Yeah. And this is something uh, that you, we've talked recently that you were wanting to continue to do, right? I mean, is uh, w with future shows and and the local openers, is that still something on your all's radar? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, and there's just so much great music here. You know, it's like the um, if we can be one doorway or one vehicle for people hearing that you know because everybody anybody that's a musician from louisville knows it's like it's a tough place to be from a lot of time you know just because people don't really hear about you as much as if you're slugging it out um in one of the bigger cities but um yeah it's just so much so much great art here yeah well, that kind of ties in nicely to uh as i mentioned today's public radio music day uh happening all over the country and I know that's kind of been a big thing for you guys. I mean, I think Public Radio was one of the first to kind of embrace My Morning Jackets. And you travel around. I mean, I think you could say it better. Like, can you feel the difference when you're in a city that sort of has that as a part of it? Oh, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's so important. And you really do feel that, um, that difference. And I feel like it's something that um, the way that I kind of have felt it, I really kind of felt it more since the pandemic, too. Because one thing I was talking to somebody about, we, one thing we don't realize that we lost in the midst of uh, the lockdown stuff is the random encounters that you see with people, you know, even people, whether people you don't know or people you do know that you just like, you run into so-and-so at the restaurant or whatever, and you're like, oh, so good to see you. You didn't like plan it out. And I feel like radio is a lot that same way. Like I get in the car and turn on WFPK, and I didn't plan on hearing this great song, but I hear this great song because it's this thing that's beautiful. It's like generating music and turning people on to new music. So... For us to be a part of that, you know, with, with radio stations like WFBK and radio stations all over the states and the world, there's just something like, I feel so grateful to be part of that happening for people that, and they're, as they're in their car driving somewhere, maybe we pop on the radio and they're like, whoa, what is this? You know, that's yeah. such a beautiful thing. We do play a lot of My Morning Jacket. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Jim James. Uh, I think I was, I was talking to someone once, uh, at, at fact, it was a get together we were both at and, and they said, Oh, you're in public radio. I said, oh, do you know what that is? And they said, yeah, it means you play a lot of My Morning Jacket. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> My Morning Jacket again is playing uh, this weekend at the KFC Yum Center on Saturday. And uh, they just released a, uh, a live album. Uh, what's well, a live album series, right? What, what's, the, what's the new show that you all just released? Because this it's, is volume two. Yeah, volume two. It's live from Chicago. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's really, yeah, <laughs> Chicago fan. Yeah, nice. Yeah, uh, it's, we love, I mean, I love Chicago. But it's, uh. Yeah, it was just a really special night. I mean, you know, it's like whatever. We're so lucky. Most nights are really special, you know, in some way. But it was just one of those nights that uh, that um, it's so cool, modern technology, that you can kind of record every show, you know. So we, we record every show we ever play. But the uh, we were just trying to decide, like, what would be a good, you know, next thing. And, and that one just kind of popped into all of our heads, which is usually the the sign, you know, when we were all kind of thinking the same thing. Everybody's kind of like, well, that night, too, Chicago, that was pretty fun. 
Um, so yeah. So it's not like a big chart. I mean, you guys are really just winging that decision. What feels good? What was the word you said? Not like a what? I don't know. What a wing in it? Oh no, you said not like a big chart. Oh chart. Yeah, you're not making like a big chart of like uh, oh this show had this, so we have to. Oh, uh, we do everything by charts and graphs. <laughs> 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 lots, <laughs> lots of pie graphs, lots of statistics. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's definitely the way my brain works. You got. <laughs> I like that. I didn't even know the question after I asked it though. So it's <laughs> that's how much I'm doing. Uh, you put out a great record recently. Uh, of course, that's what, last year, your poor whatever came out now. But uh, so, what is next? I mean, that's always we're so greedy in our fandom for what you all do because you just keep giving us great albums. What's on the horizon for my morning jacket? <laughs> well, thanks. Um, <laughs> we're just working on going to work on a, on a new record. Yeah, after this, uh, the uh, show because we had to cancel the shows here. You know, originally the shows were in the summer here. And, uh, you know, what a bummer that was, and, uh, but that's part of our whole life now. Everybody, I think that's kind of a cool part, actually, that um, I think everybody's become more accepting that we're all going to get sick, you know, and that's just part of life now. If somebody's got to not come to work or cancel a show, it's like, hey, you know, no big deal. You know, we'll, we'll do it some other time. So that when that kind of became the, uh, when we could do this show, you know, because we wanted to do the um, make up the Louisville show before the year was over, but then kind of right after that, we're going into the studio and, and starting a new record. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. <laughs> if you could just continue to whisper that in my <laughs> ear on a weekly basis. Just let me know how it's going. Jim James here on 91.9 WFBK. Thank you. And we'll be right back right after this. Welcome back. Kyle Meredith, special episode. And next up, Doug Marsh of Built the Spill. It's Built the Spill here on 91.9 WFPK. They're playing at uh, Headliners tonight. You can get those details at WFPK.org. Again, thank you all for being here. It's so great to, to hear this music and, uh, and, and the new uh, songs for the new record. Again, When the Wind Forgets Your Name. Built the Spill, Doug, Doug Marsh. How are you, sir? Good. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing all right, man. Uh, fantastic new record once again. Um, we're such big fans of what you all do. So thanks for continuing to do what you do. Oh, thanks. Sweet. Yeah. Um, let's hear just a little bit about this one, too, because uh, there was a covers record a couple years ago, but otherwise it's been a handful of years. I guess the easy stuff is what put this record back in motion for you? What, what got this one started? Well, um, a couple of years ago, 2019, um, Built to Spill was me and a couple of guys from Brazil. Um, that uh, Le Almeida and um, th they have a band Odawan and they played in Built to Spill for the year and we toured and during the time we learned these songs they recorded their basic tracks and then for the next year or so I did some overdubs and mixed it and uh, yeah that's what the record is and then uh, Mel and Teresa are uh, have been playing with me for the last year um, they're not on the record, but uh, they're the band that's going to be playing at the show tonight. Right on. Th them being a Brazilian band, did that? I guess uh, I don't know if they brought any of like that sound up. Do you feel like that had its own influence on the record? And if so, what what was that? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, they're like kind of lo-fi punk people, mm -hmm. and that's more what they were into. You know, Amer American bands and stuff, but. Um, but they also were, you know, they also were fans of a lot of Brazilian traditional, you know, classic Brazilian rock and stuff. They turned me on to a lot of stuff, and they have a little bit of that flavor to them, um, but pretty subtle. Yeah, well, I know a lot of your hallmarks are on here, although it definitely sounds like a new record. But and for me, there were parts of it that just—I don't know what I really mean by this—but it just sounds like a dream. Like that, you're coming into it. Like I, I guess what I'm getting to is when you're putting the record together, you know, maybe it's just built on jams. But do you have sort of that idea of what you wanted this sound like as you're going along for this album? I don't know. It's kind of uh, sometimes I have ideas. Most of it's just kind of letting stuff fall where it does, and and, and hope you know, and just listening to it and seeing how it how it sounds and makes makes me feel. You know, um, when I was younger, I think I w had more specific ideas in my head of what I wanted it to sound like. And it was just frustrating trying to chase those ideas. It's more fun and I think more rewarding and maybe better music if you just kind of explore and let things kind of happen as they do. Yeah. Well, it's a beautiful record. And um, thanks. Had Bob Odenkirk announced the record, I think I saw. Is, that, uh, is, there, is, there, is there a big friendship there with you all? Yeah, I don't really know. Um, 
many celebrities, maybe only a couple, but yeah, I was pretty pretty honored to be able to meet him and you know, have a little bit of a friendship. Yeah, nice yeah. words from him. Well, talking with Doug Marsh of uh, Build a Spill here again, Build a Spill playing tonight at Headlands. Get those details at WFDK.org. Yeah. My thanks, Jason Isbell, Jim James, Doug Marsh. And, of course, thanks to you as well for checking out the episode. All right, before you get out of here, uh, do hit that subscribe button. Again, you get three new interviews sent to you every single week, new and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. It's a great way to keep up with your favorite artists. Discover some new ones at iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, WFPK.org, YouTube for the video versions, or anywhere you get your podcasts from. Subscribe to Kyle Meredith with. Then after that, head over to WFPK.org. It's where I do a show Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres and music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews. That's Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. Of course, you can also find me on the uh, social media spots, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all three of them. The address is at Kyle Meredith. So I do hope you like and follow along. And that does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network. It's easy to hear your favorite artist on WFPK from wherever you are. Listen on your smart speaker, live stream from our website at WFPK.org from Louisville Public Media.